Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn about the while wend loop in Access VBA. We'll discuss the pros and cons of the while wend loop. I'll show you how to simulate an exit, even though that type of feature doesn't exist with while loops. I'll show you how to use a while loop to cycle through all of the records in the customer table displaying everyone's names using something called a record set. All that's covered in today's class. We are continuing our series on loops in VBA. Yesterday we did the for next loop. Today we're gonna to talk about the while when loop, which is a distant cousin of the do while and do until. And we'll talk about these guys in the next couple classes. This is a developer level class, which means you need to know a little bit of VBA. If you've never done any programming before, go watch my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started. Also, make sure to go watch my variables videos so you know what variables are and how they work. And also go watch my status box video. This is how I choose to display text for the user in a box on a form called a status box. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. All right, so the while when, which stands for while end, when, get it? The while when loop, which I'm just gonna refer to as a while loop from now on, is real simple. It's while some condition is true, do some stuff until you hit the end of the loop and it'll just keep repeating as long as that condition is true. For example, here's a simple while loop. We're gonna make a variable x starting at zero. While x is less than 10, add one to it and keep looping. So it's gonna start zero, one, two, three, and as soon as it hits nine, that's the last time it's gonna run because it's gonna come back and be 10 and then exit out of the loop. So that's one of the downsides of a while loop is if you want to counter, you have to deal with it yourself on like a for next loop where it automatically increments the counter for you. While loops are also typically used for things that don't require a counter. For example, a record set. A record set is where you loop through records in a table. Here, for example, you'll open a record set, which is the customer T. It'll start at the first record. And while you're not at the end of file or end of the record, just keep looping until you, as long as you have records, it'll keep looping. And it says RS move next, which is move to the next record, move to the next record, move to the next record. And as soon as you hit the end, the EOF, it drops out of the loop. So that's another use of while loops. I use these all the time for record sets. If you want to learn more about record sets, I've got a video on that too. I'll put a link down below in the link section. Now, while loops, pros and cons. Well, pros, it's very simple syntax, as you saw. They're extremely easy to write. They're extremely easy to read. Downside is there's no exit while option in a while when loop. If you're in the middle of a for and next loop like we looked at yesterday and you want to exit out of that, there's an exit for. The next two loops we're going to look at, do while and do until, there's an exit while option. But for while when, there's no exit option. Why? Because it's old. While when goes way back, and in fact, they probably only keep it around for backward compatibility because tons and tons of old Visual Basic code was written with while when loops, including mine. So <laughs> I still use them to this day. But if you want to exit prematurely out of that, there's no exit option. But star is I'm going to show you how to do it a little bit later on today. All right. As we saw, there's no built in counter. So if you want a counter variable, you got to track it and increment it yourself. So endless loops are very possible with while loops. Be careful, because if you get stuck in an endless loop, uh, your, your access is going to seem like it froze and it's just sitting there looping, looping, looping. All right, here, for example, if you don't have that X equals X plus one in there or you forget the move next, I do this all the time. That's why whenever I write this, I always put the move next before I even start my do stuff because <laughs> I always forget the move next. And then it sits there and it just keeps looping and looping and looping and access looks like it's stuck. That's called an endless loop. OK. Uh, and yeah, it's considered obsolete by a lot of programmers, but you know what? I don't listen to them. I still use while loops. It's what I learned. It's how my brain works and they're perfectly fine. I use them in almost all my projects. I teach them in all my classes. The other two loops that we're going to learn tomorrow and the next day. Yeah, they're, they're good, but while when just, just fine. It's, it's my, it's my preferred while loop. All right. So here we are in our tech help free template. I'm working with the copy that I built yesterday in the four next loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this run loop. We're going to change this to four next loop. And I'm going to change the button over here instead of hello world button. This is going to be the four next button. Now, when I do this, I break the link from the button to the code. OK, right click build event. That'll bring up your code editor and look what happened. Hello world button is still there. Okay, and when I went into the code, I got a blank sub. 
So what we have to do in this case is just take all this code here that's in our for next button and slide it down there. That's it. That's all you got to do. And then we can delete hello word button because it doesn't exist anymore. So just remember that if you rename any objects, it doesn't rename the visual basic code that's associated with it. That's something. Put that on the list. If anyone's keeping track, send that to the Microsoft team. Let them know, hey, they, they'll rename form objects if you change the table fields. If you, if you go in the customer table and change first name to F name and you've got any queries or forms or reports based on that field, those all get renamed, but they don't rename the visual basic. Why not? Come on. Give us that. All right, I'm just playing. Anyways, let's go back here. So there's our for and next loop, and we're going to take this. We're just going to slide the ones we're done with over here. Put them over to the right. We're done with you for today. All right, but we do need another button, so copy, paste, slide you up here. This today is going to be the while when loop. Man, I made the button too small, didn't I? Okay, so while when loop button. Right click, build event. Okay. Let's do the same thing we did yesterday with the for loop, except we're going to do it as a while loop. We're basically adding up the digits from 1 to 10. So again, dim x as a long and a total as a long. That's the same. Status box equals blank. Blank the box. All right. Total equals zero. That's the same. Now, instead of 4x equals 1 to 10, we got to start x off on our own. So x equals 1. That's where you want to start it. While x is less than or equal to 10, do some stuff, and then while end. And the first thing that I do, like I said before, the very first thing that I do is put my incrementer in here so I don't forget. I don't want to end with an, end up with a, a, an endless loop. All right, so right here, x equals x plus 1. Now in the middle, we can do our stuff. And the stuff is exactly the same as the stuff we typed in up here. Copy that, drop it down there, and that's it. All right? Save it. Come back out here. Let's close it. Open it. Click the button, and there we go. There's our total from 1 to 10, total of 55. Now, if you look at the code from yesterday, we had this little thing in here with the exit four. If total mod five equals zero, then exit four. Remember, we said if the total is evenly divisible by five, then exit out. And when we run this one, it hits 10 and exits out. OK, but there is no exit while option. And in fact, let's just test it just to see just if you just to prove that I know what I'm talking about. All right. Come right here. All right. Is there an exit while? Maybe. No, it goes red. How about exit loop? No, that doesn't do it. Okay. All right. So we can't do it. Now, what you can do is use a variable that you'll set true if you want to exit out of that loop. So what I like to do is I'll make it called like abort as a Boolean. Okay. And then up top here where we're initializing stuff, say abort equals false. And then our while loop is going to be while X is less than or equal to 10 and not abort. That means we're not aborting. Okay. And that's going to start off false and it's going to continue to be false unless in here somewhere you say abort equals true. All right. See what I did there? If it's divisible by five, abort equals true. Save it. Come back out here. Hit the button. Boom. And we get the same stuff. It works the same way. So while there is no exit option in a while loop, you can very easily add one. And that's what I've been doing since I was a kid. <laughs> a little abort option. All right, you ready for a little extra bonus material? This is the kind of stuff I normally save for an extended cut, but I'm, I'm putting it in this video to show you what the extended cuts usually cover, extra stuff like this. I'm trying to entice you into signing up to be a member. All right, I mentioned a record set earlier. I got a separate video on record sets, but let's do a record set loop real quick. All right, I'm going to slide the while when loop over. Put you right over here. All right, which means I need to make the for an X loop button a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, let's make another button. Copy paste. Let's slide it up here. Let's call this a record set while. Okay, record set button. All right, what are we going to use a record set for? Well, we're going to look at all of the customers in the customer table. We're going to just go down each one and list off their first and last names. All right. And put them in the status box. Ready? This is how it works. We're going to say dim RS as a record set. 
we're going to say set rs equals current db that's the current database dot open record set customer t and you can put an sql statement in there if you want to open it and sort it a particular way or limit records or filter it or whatever you want to do or you can also base it on a query if you want to build a query out here and then use that for your record set all right while not nog while well, not rs.eof end of file do some stuff rs.movenext very important to have that move next there so you avoid the endless loop when while end and then when you're all done with the record set we say rs.close it closes the record set everything you open you want to close and every variable that's an object like a record set is an object if you set a variable you want to then set it equals to nothing when you're done with it. Okay, so that's what I like to set up. I like to set up that framework first. Okay, then we can do our stuff if you want. What's the stuff we're going to do? Well, we're just going to status rs first name and space and rs last name. Give me each customer's first and last name. That's it. That's how you loop through all the customers. Then you can do stuff in here if you want. You can add up values. You can send them an email. You can whatever you want to do. That's the beauty of record sets. All right. Save it. Always good to throw in a debug compile from time to time. Let's come back over. Meow. Close this. Open it back up again and hit the button. Boom. There's all your peoples. There's your people. Lots of people. Okay. <laughs> All right, you like learning this stuff? Is this fun? Are you enjoying? Well, check out my developer lessons. I got lots and lots of them on my website. I cover while loops in detail in my Access Developer Level 12 class. And I cover those record sets in detail in Access Developer 16. That's a really good lesson. This is a foundational lesson for a lot of stuff that comes after it. So that's it. That's the famous while when loop. And that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. 
Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.